Welcome to Keys to the Kingdom Ministries. I'm your host, Pastor Apostle Michael E. Snooks, and we praise God for another great opportunity that He's giving to us to come together around the Word of God. We're in uh, uh, offshoot of Everlasting Gospel Kingdom Ministries located in Columbia, South Carolina, uh, and where uh, uh, I, 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 I'm there as the overseer of Pastor Elaine Brown being the uh, uh, senior pastor. We praise God for just blessing us with uh, this beautiful, beautiful time that we share together and the uh, feedback that we get regarding the Word of God. We praise God for what God is saying and what God is doing in these days. I believe I've got a good message for you today that's going to help you to see some things uh, apostolically and prophetically even more clearer than you've seen before. So call up a friend and let him know that Apostle Snooks is on the air, share the broadcast, and uh, I know that uh, uh, the, the, they will thank you <laughs> for, for sharing it. So let's open up with a word of prayer and then we'll jump straight into the word of God. Father, I bless you and I praise you and I worship you and I magnify you. I exalt you. I extol you. I give you the glory. I pray this on this afternoon that you would bless to the extent that our ignorance would be permanently and totally and irreparably uh, damage, uh, cause light to shine forth in us to the extent that we will begin to see you in a beautiful, glorious, and brand new way. Bless the teaching on this afternoon. We pray for the spirit of prophecy and the uh, words of knowledge and wisdom that they would be uh, 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 here to be a blessing to your people. Help somebody, heal somebody, deliver somebody, God. And we'll give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah to God. Glory to God Almighty. All right, we've been talking about the Lord's Prayer, and we're going to continue. We're going to continue, and uh, hopefully I'm going to be closing this thing out soon. But um, the Holy Spirit had, given, had kind of prompted me again that I need to go back and, and make sure that an, a certain understanding uh uh, has taken place, and uh, that is in the the Lord's Prayer. We, you know, you know, we looked at um, Luke chapter eleven, and also um, Saint Matthew's chapter six, where we have this rendition of what we call the Lord's Prayer. Where Je in the book of Luke, Jesus is asked by his disciples, "Lord, teach us to pray." And Jesus says, okay, when you pray, do it like this. And this is the result of what Jesus said uh, in answer to the question to teach uh, the disciples to pray. It wasn't teach us to, I mean, show us how to recite like you recite or show us how to uh, confess like you confess. It was, Lord, teach us, teach us. And Jesus amazingly teaches a protocol to approaching God that is just awesome. And it has so much information in it. Um, that when we look at it very closely, we begin to see many, many things. Now we're down to the part in the prayer where it says, give us this day, our daily bread. And I want to talk about that a little bit more to make before I move on to the next section of it. Forgive us uh, our uh, uh, sins or trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. All that, that's some good, good stuff that we're going to be going over. And, um, uh, 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 we'll be getting to that soon, but I need to talk another day about, uh, give us this day, our daily bread. So, uh, 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 again, uh, uh, in the, we, we, we've come down to this port. I won't go back over rehash. You can check out some of the previous, uh, uh, uh recordings and teachings and to see what we had to say about, uh, some of those other things. But I want to I, I, I want to talk about again, 
uh, give us this day our daily bread. Or the Holy Spirit prompted me. I, I was ready to move on to something else, and I just felt that prompted my spirit. No, you need to make sure that this is covered. Amen. And in, in Jesus' name. So um, when we think of this idea, give us this day our daily bread, most of us, uh, if, if you were like me, I was taught mostly that this dealt with God, provide for me my daily needs. Uh, because it said bread, of course, provide us with food, provide us with the food that we know that we need. Provide us with uh, the clothing, f provide us with a uh, 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 suitable shelter. And all of those things, I believe, are correct. But there's something deeper in the prayer that Jesus is teaching uh, as we look closer, uh, closer at it. Remember, uh, when we uh, uh, started out and we, 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 we looked at uh, the king, that God's kingdom come and his will be done in the earth as it is in heaven, Jesus uh, had begun to go to a place in, in teaching, uh, praying uh, that was prophetic and apostolic i want the in, i want the uh, 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 pray to god uh and be in agreement with him that you want his kingdom to come to the earth you want his will to be done in the earth uh, uh, just like it's done in heaven, you want it to be done in earth. And likewise, he continues on in the prayer. He doesn't contextually, uh, uh, be, he, he doesn't uh, start out teaching about the kingdom and let the kingdom and the will of God be done and then jump over to food. No, it's in the same uh, tra uh, train of, of thought. Now, so when Jesus says, Lord, give us this day our daily bread, we need to understand uh, what Jesus is actually talking about. Now, I believe that Jesus is talking about uh, understanding the day that we live in. Give us this day, an understanding about the day that we live in. When he says, thy kingdom come, he's talking about the kingdom that uh, uh, he wasn't talking about uh, Christ's kingdom back in David and Solomon's day. No, he was talking about the day of the kingdom that was established in that day. And so in, 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 in this in this segment of the prayer, I believe Jesus is, is saying, give us this day, our daily bread. Bread uh, for what we need to understand about God, what we need to understand about what God is doing, what we need to understand about where God is uh, uh, in this day. Now, I know that to some, uh, it, it, some won't think that it, it matters. Now, I'm saved already. I'm on my way to heaven, and I am enjoying the trip. And uh, But l let me just say something to you about that mentality or that attitude. Uh, uh, you may be fit for going to heaven because you have accepted Jesus Christ in your heart. You accepted the grace of God that God gives, and you may be on your way uh, uh, to heaven. But you may not be, uh, uh, you, you, you may even be uh, 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 adequate in leading others in what you know. But let me just say this. You are not fit. Fit. You can you can be on your way to heaven and not be fit to show and tell people of the earth what Father God is saying and doing in this day. In other words, a, a, a representation that someone can look at you and say, this is what God is doing. Now, I know that you might say, oh, no, if somebody looks at me, they're going to say, oh, that's a saved person right there. That's what God is doing. God is saving people. Yes, he's saving people, but God is doing so much more than saving people. Did you know that God has a heart not just for people, but God has a, a, a heart for families? God has a heart for nations. God even has a heart for the entire 
earth uh, uh, to, 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 to begin to bear the fruit that he in originally intended for it to bear. So when we say give us this day, some men have no interest at all of knowing what God is doing in this day. Uh, they, may know, they may have no interest at all in uh, a bread from God or the word of God or the will of God or understanding the movement of God in this particular, some may have no uh, desire to even know that. But uh, again, you, uh, 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 you, uh, if you feel no need to to, to be an accurate, an accurate representation of who the Father is. You know, if you feel no need to be to, to, to be an accurate representation, rep, representation, uh, I, I I believe uh, that this will, it, it, while it won't affect your going to heaven, it will affect other things in your life. It's difficult and probably almost impossible uh, of uh, uh, for you to be deployed by God if you don't know what God is saying and doing in your generation. Now you could continue to tell people about the cross and getting people saved. But if you don't know what God is doing, if you don't uh, have any understanding as to what God is doing, if you don't, uh, 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 if you don't look out into the world and say, okay, this is God, that's God, this is not God. This is, if you can't do that, then it's going to be difficult and almost impossible for you to be deployed in a partnership with God Almighty uh, to fulfill the purposes of God in the earth. You won't be able to do that. You'll still be able to go to heaven because you've got, you're, you're saved, but the purposes of God in, 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 the, in, in, in the times, in the, in the, in the, in, 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 <laughs> The, the, I want to say Kairos, but I don't want to talk in Greek uh, when we, we need to be understanding in English. What is God saying and doing? If you have no desire to know what God is saying and doing, it is a difficult and almost impossible for you to be an accurate representation that speaks uh, uh, to the earth, an accurate representation uh, about people, about uh, 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 people being to read you as you are the word of God. And again, you might say, well, uh, I, I don't care about that. I'm just on my way to heaven and whatnot. So it won't affect your own your way and on your way to heaven. But once you get there in terms of rewards, if you could not partner with God while you were in the earth and what God is saying and what God is doing, if you could not part because you didn't know it will affect your rewards. Now you might say, well, I, I, I couldn't know because I just didn't know. Well, this, that's why there's people that's teaching and preaching. Uh, the scripture says, and God gave some apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists for the perfecting of the church and for the edifying of the body of Christ. So it's important then when Jesus says, uh, uh, pray uh, uh, give us this day our daily bread. Uh, Jesus is teaching something uh, pretty deep here and not just uh, uh, something that deals with uh, 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 the necessities of our belly. And uh, let, let's do something. Let's destroy this assumption with the scriptures uh, so that we can kind of have a clarity concerning, concerning moving forward and what is actually God uh, 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 saying. Okay. So um, in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25 there's a teaching here that Jesus is doing and he says therefore I say unto you take no thought for your life he said what you shall eat or what you shall drink nor yet for your body for ye shall or, or what you shall put on but uh, 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 is not your life more than meat 
and and your body more than raiment. So here's a place where Jesus is just plain and sp- and simply just kind of states it. I'm not talking to you about uh, the emphasis on just what you will eat and what you are wear. He says, take no thought about this. Now, Jesus is not schizophrenic. Jesus is not bipolar. Jesus is not double-minded. He doesn't say in one place, uh, 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 pray, uh, stop, take note, uh, point your heart towards God and say, Father, give us this day our daily bread. And he's talking about uh, food, necessities, and all those things. Uh, 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 he doesn't just teach us that and then turn right around in the next breath and tell us, take no thought uh, about what you're going to eat or what you're going to put on. Uh, Father, I need to make this known to you. I need my daily bread. Give me my daily bread. And I'm speaking of food and clothing. And then on the other hand, take no thought. You see how contextually it it doesn't the, the mind it, it, it doesn't it doesn't mesh with the mind of God or mesh with what God really is saying. Take uh, 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 give us this day our daily bread. Now let me be perfectly clear. I believe believe that's in inclusive in there that is our food, clothing, and all the things that we need in life. But it is not the major emphasis of what Jesus is teaching at this time. And the major emphasis uh, uh, is, is what Jesus himself was doing while he was on earth. When he said to the Father, Father, give us this day our daily bread, uh, uh, he, he knew that he, he needed a word from God. He knew that he needed the will of God. He knew that he needed, yes, all needs met, but he knew that he needed the direction and the governance of the spirit of the most high God. Let's look, look let's look a little closer at this. I want to, I want to deal with this, uh, uh, this day, uh, 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 for just a few more, uh, uh, at least one more session, this session right here, because when we understand what God means, uh, when, when we, we deal with the, uh, the, 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 the term a day of the Lord, give us this day. When we understand a day of the Lord, when, when the Bible mentions day, uh, what is it actually talking about? And this is very important because if you get it out of context, then you'll have a problem. We have in the first place we see the the content uh, the term day is back in the book of Genesis, the first chapter. On the first day, on the second day, on the third day, and and uh, where we're talking about the creation of the world. I say the world's uh, 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 plural, uh, the planetary systems, the universe. Uh, 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 the point is, is this. Is that uh, when we say, and God uh, and the evening and the morning were the first day, are we talking about a 24-hour period that creates our day based on the measurement of the works of the sun and the moon? Uh, 24-hour period that makes up a day. And then on the second day, are we talking about another 24-hour period that makes up the second day Uh, uh, until we get to the the seventh day and we and then we say okay there were seven 24 hour period periods that God created the the uh, seven days seven 24 hour periods that God created the universe some would say no a day equaled uh, uh, maybe a thousand years some would even go as far as to say no uh, one day it may have equaled a million years so uh, uh, there's ideas and thoughts about the, the, the concept, but you can see the concept of a day in that particular picture dealing with uh, Genesis chapter uh, Genesis chapter 1. You can see the concept, the concept that I'm attempting to explain how that a day can be seen in different ways when we deal in the scripture. Let's look at, let's look at another place. This is over in 2 Peter. 
I talked a little bit about it already, but let's read it anyway. Second Peter chapter two and verse uh, uh, three. Uh, uh, and, and we'll read verse, excuse me, chapter three and verse eight. Second Peter chapter three, uh, 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 verse eight. He says, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day. So we see this concept of a day here uh, uh, meaning something different than a 24 hour period. And when the scripture is speaking prophetically using the term day, it could mean something very different. It does not have to mean a 24 hour period when the scripture is using uh, the word day. So Peter here brings that out when he says uh, 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 a day can be seen and, and, and in terms of a thousand years and a thousand years can be seen as a single day. So now, uh, <clears throat> if we're <clears throat> of the notion that a day with the Lord used when it's used in scripture is always speaking of a 24 hour period, then we will very much miss it. We will not, we will not, uh, 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 uh we will not be, uh, 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 we will not be able to walk in uh, in partnership with God Almighty. If we are in our day, living in our day, and we're walking in our day, but uh, uh, we don't know what God is saying. If we're walking in our day and we are religious as we're walking in our day, the only thing that you could be religious about was things that were taught in a former day because you don't have any information about anything else God is saying or anything else that God wants to do in the in 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 the in the in the coming days so you're looking at just uh you're just speaking looking about what you heard and what was but you don't have any understanding uh, or any mindset about uh, uh, walking with God, being an accurate representation of God in this present day. Now, I know some people again say, I don't care about any of that stuff, I apostle. I'll just, uh, just give me the cross, just give me. And I told you before, that's not going to hurt you in terms of going to heaven. It will cause you not to be able to work together with Christ in this present day because you ignore you decide you know you're not interested in the word for today God gave the, the prophetic, he gave apostolic, the apostolic, he gave pastors, teachers, evangelists to help us to understand, keep moving with God. God is not, uh, hadn't stuck up, a, 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 a done something once and then stopped right there and he's not doing anything else uh, anymore. No, that, 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 that's, a, that's a wrong understanding of who God is and the, uh, who, who, who he's created us to be. We're created unto purpose in every generation, every day of the movements of God uh, uh, according to God's vision, according to God's plan, according to where God is going. Uh, God has called us uh, to be servants uh, 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 in every day. And you, and again, it's impossible, uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to impossible to walk with God in your day in an accurate expression and an accurate partnership of, of getting done what God wants to get done. It's almost impossible if you don't know what God wants to get done. Okay, let me let me, let me continue on. Look at uh, another place. I want to tell you, I want to show you something that I call the day of Jesus Christ on earth and the day of his ascension, two different days and whatnot. Uh, uh, Mark uh, uh, chapter 13, 31 and 32, heaven and earth shall pass away. The scriptures teach, but my words shall not pass away. Verse 32, but of that day and that hour knoweth no, knoweth no man, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the son of 
neither the Son, but the Father. Here's a day when Jesus walked the earth, and Jesus says, heaven and earth is going to pass away, and but not one uh, 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 iota, one jot or tittle of the word. He says, the word will not pass away. Now, as Jesus is walking on the earth, he tells him something else. He says, but of that day, of that day, no man knows the day nor the hour. He says, not the angels uh, uh, that are in heaven, not even the Son knows the day. Only the Father knows the day. Now, this was the day when Jesus was walking on earth. We know he lived more than one, one day. He lived at least uh, th uh, th 33 years uh, of life and three years of, of, of strong ministry. And uh, but the thing I want to emphasize here, Jesus says, uh, he says, uh, he says, but of that day, uh, uh, heaven and earth is going to pass away. Uh, 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 he says, uh, 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 my, but my word shall not pass away. And he says, but of that day, no man know of the day nor the hour. Then we look over into uh, the book of the Revelation. Here was what we understand. There was a season and a day that no man knew the day nor the hour. There was a season and a day that no man knew the day nor the hour. Look at Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. He says, the revelation of Jesus Christ. <laughs> the revelation of who? The revelation of Jesus Christ. He says, which God gave him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Now, I don't see how we mess that up because it says uh, it's a revelation of Jesus Christ. It's something that came to Jesus. It's something that Jesus was made aware of. It's just the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And Jesus sent an angel sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So here's the day of Jesus' ascension. You have a day of Jesus walking into the earth, which no man knew, and then a day of Jesus' ascension where God uh, opens up Jesus' revelations. You see, Jesus walking in two dimensions, and, and it's, we're talking about two different days. Jesus, when he walked on the earth, this is a day of his walking in the earth. When he moved into the, the realms of the heavens and the, in the ascension. I hope you believe in the ascension. When he moves into this dimension of the ascension, now uh, the Bible says that he's given a greater revelation of things that must shortly come to pass. And he sends his angel to John to give us an understand. Can you see this twofold day kinds of situation here? Suppose you thought that Jesus, uh, Messiah, was still coming to die on the cross. You, you thought that uh, 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 he was coming uh, uh, still to, to to, 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 be, to be the sacrifice for your spirit, uh, for, to, for you not to have to go to hell. Suppose you thought that, that we were still living in that day. Can you see how that uh, 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 it wouldn't stop you in terms of your love for God, but you would not be accurately representing what God is saying, nor what God is doing. You wouldn't be accurately represented if you didn't know the day that you lived in. So it's important that we knew the day. Thank God for people like the Apostle Paul, Peter, and all these brothers that knew the day. And when they knew the day, they wrote it down so that we could, we could get understanding of it in our day. Not only did they write down what took place, but they wrote down what the prophetic by the Spirit of God, they took. They wrote down what will take place also. Okay, look at another place. This one's going to, I want to show you something about casting out devils, and uh, because it paints a good picture of the day that we live in, and the day, uh, and different days. Mark 16 and 17, it says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Now, how many of you know that some people say, well, no, you can't use that because that piece of scripture was added later. It wasn't a part of original text. And, you know, uh, people have uh, <laughs> debates in, about this for, for eons, and I'm not going to debate about it. I'm just going to use it because it's here. Amen. So he says, 
In my name, you'll cast out devils. We're talking about a period of time. There's a day where the devil is still on earth, even after Jesus has gone to the cross, even after Jesus has has has, has gone into the hells and ascend, uh, rose from the dead and picked up the body and ascended into the heaven. Even after all of this, there's a devil that's still on the earth. Oh, man, I often wondered, God, just get rid of him. <laughs> but there's a devil that's still on the earth. Now, now, uh, it, it says uh, uh, that this is something we have to take note of. The day that we live in, even after Jesus did what he did, Satan is still on the planet. Oh, that's the day that we live in. That's the day. Okay. But watch this over in Revelations 20 and 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Watch this. Revelation 20 and 2. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years. Verse 20 and 3. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should not deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Now, here's another day that John writes about in Revelation chapter 20, where Satan will be cast off of the earth. Now, how many of you know in that day, you have then in that day, there is no need to cast out devils in that day because the devil the devil won't be here he'll be bound into the bottomless pit he'll be bound for a thousand years and and so i want you to look at that for just a moment mark says in my name you'll cast out devils john writes there's a day there's a day where uh uh um, there's a day where the devil will be removed from the planet for a thousand years. John says in my name right now you're going to cast out devils, but he says there's a day coming. He says they're going the devil is going to be cast off of the planet for a thousand years. Can you see these clearly as two different days and can you see why it's important that you understand the day that you live in because if you don't understand that there's still devils, they can be ravaging you and you're not trying to cast them out. And if you don't understand uh, when the devil is removed, that they don't need standing there yelling and screaming at devils uh, trying to cast them out because it's not even here. If you don't understand that, then you can't operate accurately and be a, 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 the right representation in your generation manifesting uh, 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 the purposes of God to the day that you live in. So that's very important. I wanted you, I need you to see that. Give, let, me, let me give you two more uh, places, two more examples, and then I'll be finished for the day. The kingdom transition. Look at John chapter 18 and 36. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight and uh, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Here Jesus is, is about to be crucified and he tells these people that's ganging all around him, attempting to, 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 to are you a king? They ask him, are you a king? And Jesus said, listen, my kingdoms are not of this world. Now Jesus didn't speak in, 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 in uh, any different languages. Uh, uh, he spoke plain English. He said, my my king, well, not plain English, he didn't speak, the Bible wasn't originally, uh, it wasn't the original tongue, but the, the point is, is this, he spoke plainly, my kingdoms are not of this world. Now you gotta see that because this is the day that Jesus lived in. Jesus said, listen, uh, if, 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 if my kingdoms was of this world, I could call the angels. Hey, hey, Jesus said, listen, if my kingdom was of this world, I got servants that will come and fight for me. See, in the day that the Lord says, if it was my kingdoms now, my servants will come and fight. You got to catch that because when we go over to Revelations 11 and 15, 
He says, and the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever. Now look, here's a day in Revelation, in the Revelation chapter 11 where the seventh trumpet sounds and when the trumpet sound, uh, the voice of the angels goes out and says the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God. Watch that now. A day when the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our God. Put the two together and see the contrasting of the two days. Mark, uh, uh, I mean, uh, John 8, 36. Uh, my kingdoms are not of this world. Revelation 11 my, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God. Let me say it again. John, uh, uh, John my kingdoms are not of this world. Revelation 11, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God. What are you looking at here? Are you looking at a, 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 some controversy? Are you looking at some, no? You're looking at two different days, two different days of the Lord. One where Jesus openly declares, "Listen, I got angels; they can come fight if if this was my if this was that time if this was that day." But it's not that day. So He's giving Himself over to die. Uh, but now over here in Revelation chapter eleven, He says, "The kingdoms of." this world have become. You see, you're looking at two different days. I need you to get this so when you understand, when the Lord says, give us this day, he wants you to have the knowledge, the accuracy, he wants you to have the, the, the revelation of the things that are, that are for you in this your day. He wants you to work together with God the Father and the Holy Spirit be led perfectly. He wants you to be able to govern based on a, a correct uh, understanding of what God is saying and doing. And let me give you this last one. I call it the new day. Uh, uh, having an understanding and an accurate uh, 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 mindset concerning the new day. I'm going to look at one place. Uh, Isaiah chapter 61 and 2. It's a very good place. He says, he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he, because the Lord have anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive and the opening of prisons to them that are bound. Watch verse two very carefully. He says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of the vengeance of our God. Watch that again. It's chapter 61 and verse 2 of Isaiah to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of the vengeance of our God. Now, this is very, uh, it can be um, a very, very complicated place because you have two thoughts in one verse of scripture. I'm, I'm, so, I'm inclined to believe this trip up the nation of Israel over 2,000 years ago because Israel was looking for Messiah to come in, Mashiach. She was looking for Messiah to come in and to deliver her from all of her enemies. But Messiah came in riding on a donkey and dying on a cross. So she saw him as weak. And she said, that can't be my Messiah. I don't need a weak Messiah. I need a strong Messiah. So uh, 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 it tripped them up because they were looking for a, a God that would come in with strong vengeance against the enemies, a day, a time where God will come in strongly uh, uh, vindicating uh, 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 Israel's purposes. So we have two things here. Uh, when Jesus walked, uh, uh, the day of our Lord Jesus Christ is the day 
of the acceptable year of the Lord. It's an accepted time. It's a time period where God says, I, 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 I offer to you grace. I give you uh, an open door. It's an acceptable time of the Lord. And then it's uh, and then the other thing, place that we looked at uh, uh, in one verse, he says, uh, 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 but there's also a time where the Spirit of God will come in with the day of the vengeance of of the Lord. Now listen, those are two different days that I wanted to show you to show you that that when we when we are praying the prayer uh, that Jesus is teaching us, give us this day, we need some revelation concerning this day. We need some revelation concerning this day. If we don't get revelation concerning this day, then uh, it's, it's, it's difficult and almost impossible to be an accurate representation of what God is saying and what God is doing. I want to pray with you. And as I pray with you, I believe that God is going to continue. I want you to, I want you to be uh, stirred up about this word. Uh, give us this day. Uh, uh, I, I want you to be stirred up about this word, and I want you to 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 ask the Lord: Is what this man, uh, Apostle T Snook's teaching, is it correct in terms of you want us <clears throat> to know what you're saying and know what you're doing? Uh, 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 yes, it, it's very important that we understand what we are saying, what 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 God is saying, and what God is doing. So let's pray together, Father. I just believe you. I believe you. I believe you. I believe. I believe your word. I honor you and I give you glory. I give you praise. I, I magnify you. I ask you, God, now in the name of Jesus Christ, for your Holy Spirit to bring a seal and a confirmation of the word of God. May your spirit, God, hallelujah, be released upon the listeners and uh, those that will come across this message at whatever time. I pray, dear God, that you would uh, uh, help us uh, to, to have a... Uh, 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 help us to have an encounter with you to the extent that we know that hallelujah uh, the, that, that you've spoken something to us and you've shown something to us and you've helped us to fulfill purpose greatly in our lives we give you the honor, we give you the glory we give you the praise, bless somebody God, heal somebody, deliver somebody help somebody, in Jesus magnificent name, we say amen and amen and amen, alright well well, praise God Almighty. We thank God again for uh, uh, the teaching on this evening. Give us this day our daily bread. If that's something uh, that you are interested in, it is something the Holy Spirit has placed in your heart. And as he has placed that in your heart, you should grab a hold to it and move forward. Uh, I want you to remember that we're on every uh, Sunday, every third, uh, Tuesday, as we are, and then we're not just on on Tuesday, but we're on on we're on Thursday nights also, and uh, as we're on Thursday nights, uh, 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 I said Tuesday, didn't I? Yes, Tuesday. Uh, and 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 Sunday, not Thursday. Tuesday nights and. Uh, and uh, 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 Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. And then uh, we've got our uh, uh, intercessory prayer with Pastor Elaine Brown on Monday at 7 p.m. We've got also some affiliates, Apostle Fred and Melinda Bell, that's on every, every uh, they're on every uh, Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. and also Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Powerful teaching couple uh, down in Georgia. And then uh, 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 we've got Apostle uh, the, the um, Solteris, uh, Bishop uh, Ephraim and Carol Solteris down in Georgia also. 6 p.m. on Thursday evenings, 3D Bible study. Uh, you'll be very blessed, amen, to, ta to tap into them. Uh, there's so many others. Dr. Cooper on Thursdays uh, uh, that is uh, doing a great job with uh, 
uh, uh, uh, teaching dead. They're thirsty during the daytime. But we can give you all the information concerning any of these ministries. Uh, you don't have to miss a day's a day at all. Praise God of of uh, being uh, 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 operating in, in the the presence of the Holy Spirit and the revelation of the Word of God. You don't have to miss anything. All you gotta do is come on and join Him. Uh, you're the blessed. You'll not be the curse ever. You're the head. You'll not be the tail ever. Remember, keep us in your prayers. We keep you in our prayers also. In Jesus' name, be blessed. We say shalom. We'll see you next time in Jesus' name.